on my other subject is. So. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're going live, and it's not Richie Rich. What we're doing is we've got Mark Arnold, then we're going to be talking Alvin and the Chipmunks. That was a fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. cartoon show. Now, this book you got here, I'm waiting for my signed copy. You mailed it off, didn't you? Yes, I did. Slow Thank mail God. from here to Australia. Oh, well. <laughs> Do you remember what you inscribed on the book? Uh, I, I think I said, from the monkeys to the chipmunks. <laughs> we're going right, down in the world. <laughs> This book, how long did it take you to write? Um, most of my books take about a year to two years, depending on what it is. This one took did a little bit longer. A, did it take a year? Yeah. yeah. So you've been a Chipmunk fan since the Chipmunk started? Oh, well, I wasn't even alive when it started, but yeah. Uh, since, since I was a kid, yes. <laughs> when did it start now, the Chipmunks? Fill, fill me in when he first started the show, the Cardinal well, show. Well, the, the the record was first, which was the okay. Christmas one. You what know, year was the, that? 1958. Have you got that record with you there? Uh, I have the album it's off of. You know, I can show you that. Yeah, can oh, I see the album? Yeah. This, this album came out in 1959. It's called oh, Let's it All Sing with the Chipmunks. Bring it closer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Just turn it down. As you, as, as you can see, oops. I got too much light. You go the other side. Out of the eight, hey, if you can take it out of the plastic, that's going to yeah, help. Yeah, that's probably that's probably better. But it has it has a, a shiny surface anyway. But I'll try to tip yeah. it. There oh, we go. Please, that's <laughs> show me the back. As you can see, the chipmunks are like realistic. They don't look like on the cartoon shows. So. But on the back, uh, you got Ross Magnusarian, a photo of him, and some kind of other little goofy chipmunk drawings and stuff. Some other right. owner, previous owner, uh, colored this in, so it's not supposed to be colored like that. Okay, can I ask you, who's David Savell? Is that the guy that's on the cartoon? Who's that? Yes, that's his uh, stage name, because Ross Magdasarian, uh, I'll show you this really quickly. He did an album later where he used his real name, but as you can see, that's a long name, <laughs> Magdasarian. So, Is he still alive? Is he still alive? No. No. I was going to say, it'd be, about, it'd be hard selling an album with that name. <laughs> His son has taken over, but I can get into that later. But anyway, going back to your original question, uh, yeah, the, the Christmas song, the one that's called Christmas Don't Be Late, that was the first one. Then they made this album, and the album was on, ooh, red vinyl, ooh. <laughs> what, back then, what year was that one, the red vinyl? This was in 1958, 59. How do you come out with a record that's red vinyl? That's unheard of. They they did it, you know. They 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 put it out that way just to attract buyers. I mean, it came out at Christmas time. It's all Christmas themed, so red is kind of a Christmassy color, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's good if they'd known how to do a splatter where they do red and white, you know. Yeah, like I don't think they knew how to do that then. It was just a solid red. But uh, then a few years later, let me jump ahead to your next question. Um, then they redesigned the characters like this in 1961. And did the album show. So, show me the back, Mark. Yeah, the, the back's probably easier to see on this one. That's fantastic. Can I ask you now? Yeah. Is the album show running now in the States at the moment on a Carter Network or something? Uh, no. I mean, they put a few episodes out on DVD and Blu ray, but uh, currently, I think Nickelodeon, I don't know if you get that station there, uh, was showing it probably about 20 years ago. That was really the last time they showed it. So, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, um, the current owners, which is the original guy's son and his wife, uh, they made some live action pictures in the last few years and, uh, a newer cartoon show and things like that. So they, they, they put out this original stuff, which I love best kind of sparingly. <laughs> can I ask you now, sure. with Alvin, can you buy the complete uh, DVD set or Blu-ray set of the whole whole cartoon series. That's what I know. How many series did they do? How many they episodes? Did, they only did one season. Originally, it was in prime time on CBS, um, and it ran one year. And then they uh, it uh, got a second life when they repeated it on Saturday mornings for years. And there's 26 shows, and uh, only three of them made them to do DVD and Blu-ray. So. 
you know, eventually they might do the rest, but yeah, everybody would really like to see a full series, but um, I hate to say, you might have to go to a, a bootleg market or something like that. <laughs> I had to. Do it ask, it compared to the Beatle cartoons. What I'm saying is, all right, Alvin, right up there with the Beatle cartoons. Uh, I like Alvin's show much better than the Beatles cartoons. The Beatles cartoons get a little silly. <laughs> Whereas, actually, there's some genuine humor in a lot of the Alvin Show cartoons, the original ones. I know, I get that too, but I said, I love them both. I'm just, you know, I found that about your album by accident because Danny Salazi from the character said he wrote a book about Alvin and he did the forward. Tell me yeah. about that. Well, um, he contacted me when we were working on, I think it was when we were almost finished with the first Monkeys book, Michael uh ventrella and i and so um i said well you know you can write i, I think we got him to write a little piece for the monkeys book but uh he said oh i'd really like to do a forward and i go well my next book i'm working on is about the chipmunks and he goes oh i love the chipmunks can i do it can i can i can i and i go sure i guess so <laughs> and uh you know with the characters if you search around on youtube he actually does a version of uh, the chipmunk song, the Christmas one, and a, a couple other uh, Christmas chipmunk records, but he, do, he doesn't do it in the sped up voice. He does it in his normal singing voice. And he actually did a, a good rendition of it. You know, they didn't have the, the yelling and, you know, the Alvin and all that stuff. They just sang it straight, but it was a really good rendition. So, how did they speed up their voices? What did they do? Just out of type. And just made it at a certain speed when they recorded it, or recorded it normal, and then he sped it up in those days. How did he get Alvin's voices to that speed? And do you know the speed? Um, I don't know the exact speed. It was always kind of like a, a secret. But I mean, uh, I know most uh, reel to reel tape recorders, they have like two or three speeds, and I think you had to turn it down two speeds. And when you speak to make it sound well, uh, you sound right, you have to speak kind of slowly and distinctly like that. Because if you just talk like in your normal voice and then you speed it up, then it's blah, 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 like that, <laughs> you know, like Chip and Dale and uh, uh, the Disney cartoons. They didn't do it the same way, and you could tell, you know, it's you can barely understand what they're saying. So, yeah. Now, I want to know facts now about the book because until my book, book arrives. <laughs> Tell me now what you found out about Alvin. Give me some um, fantastic facts or things that no one knows about Alvin and the Chipmunks. Well, um, have you heard of the Wrecking Crew? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, the Wrecking Crew, who played on the background of the Monkeys records and the Beach Boys yeah. and Sonny and Cher and Simon Lewis and Garfunkel. Louis Sheldon, Lewis and Sheldon played guitar. Yeah. They, they played on the background of most of these uh, Chipmunks records, too. Um, and if you're familiar with uh, the one chipmunk record called Alvin's Orchestra, are you familiar with that one? Not really, because there's okay. so many. <laughs> well, there's this one uh, short record he did called Alvin's Orchestra, and I'll basically paraphrase. David Seville comes in and he goes, uh, hello, boys, what's this big fancy orchestra in here? And then Alvin starts going... Ready, everybody? One, two, three. And then it's a big orchestra, and David starts yelling about how much an orchestra costs and says, would you stop playing? It's like a million dollars for this. And, you know, orchestra, will you cut that out? And he keeps yelling, and that's basically the record for three minutes. But this is the fact I didn't know. Um, are you familiar with Frank Zappa's material? Yes. Okay. He had this one album called Lumpy Gravy, like in the late 60s. And there's an orca it's orchestrated versions of things there, too. It's the exact same orchestra that played on Alvin's orchestra on Frank Zappa's Lumpy Gravy. No, no, <laughs> and Frank, exactly Zappa right. gave, Frank Zappa gave the orchestra a name, which I'd have to look it up in the book to give you the exact name, because it's some goofball, weird, long name. So. <laughs> but it's the same player. How long have you been watching the cartoons to write the uh, book since you were a kid? Since I was a kid, yeah. Early 70s, probably the first time I saw them. And, yeah, they played them quite frequently back then. And so, you know, I had toys, and I still have them, but they're all put away right now. So, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't even know they had albums, you know. It was like I had the single of Chipmunk Song, and then 
I was going through a thrift shop or something, and I found one of the old albums. I was like, whoa, I didn't know there's albums. And then you look on the back, and there's, like, pictures. I can even show you. Um, yeah, it was, show me everything. It was this one. It was a Beatles album. Where they yeah, that's the, right. That's rare. That's yeah. rare. And, you probably play that more than the Beatles. Anyway, so I flipped it over in the back, and they show all these albums here. You know, it's like, whoa, I didn't Here's know the they word. did all this. <laughs> oh, you did the albums. Hey, I've got a quick Beatle question for you. You ready? Sure, sure. You know on Taxman, the song, who, who does the coughing noise at the start of Taxman? Do you know? Oh, jeez, I don't know. I thought, I, okay, that's all I, I thought it was know. George, but I really don't know. Okay, great. That's all I need to know. Okay, let's continue on with Alvin. That's <laughs> why when he used to come on on the TV, I used to freak out at the start of that show. Great opening to a TV show. Mm-hmm. Where, where they're, they're zipping around the, the studio and everything. and you know, well, no, When they scream at Alvin. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, the, the cover on here, they had the, like, the TV sets and everything just like this. So, you know. <laughs> exactly. Is there any other stuff you've got on Alvin there next to you or not? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, I'll show you an album that uh, David Seville did before he did The Chipmunks. Um, he tried to be like a serious uh, uh, record guy. Well, that doesn't and, work, does it? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, his, and then this is even before he did a song called Witch Doctor, which is kind of like the first yeah. uh, thing with speeding up things. Oh, that he, that's a baby. Uh, I remember that. That's a great song. Yeah. But this is even before that. So he's trying to be kind of taken seriously. It didn't really work. Um, he also made appearances in different movies, like he's in Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window and a few other films. And, you know, the acting career, eh. You know, but then once he did the chipmunks thing, that's what he did the rest of his life. And he passed away, unfortunately, a bit too young uh, in 1972. He was 50 years old. So, 50 Can I ask you the story how he actually came up with the chipmunks? Was it a matter of he needed something to motivate him? Or he just came from nowhere? Do you actually know the story of how he came up with that concept? Well, there's a couple of different stories. I tend to think it's like a, a combination of a few of these things as these stories go. Um, the the sort of official, unofficial story is Liberty Records, the label that he was on. And I do talk at length about the history of Liberty Records. Uh, were they were doing well they had different artists i mean some you may have heard of julie london was one and i can't think of all the other ones uh even eddie cochran did some records for him and stuff like that but by the early uh 19, 1950s eh, sales are starting to slip and uh you know you know, David, you know, Ross Bagdasarian said, I got to do something. I got to do something. He was just putting out little instrumental things, trying to be, like I said, a serious performer. And uh, apparently the story goes, he only had $200 in the bank and yeah. bought a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which at the time was an expensive item. I mean, nowadays you get tape recorder or something for nothing, you know, or record on yeah. your computer or whatever, you know. <laughs> but then it was a big investment. And... Um, he started playing with the speeds and then like i said he did witch doctor first and it became a number one hit um, but one number one hit won't save a record company and so they said do another one do another one <laughs> and so uh in his thinking he said well if one sped up voice works why not three but you know there it wasn't the next record he did he did a few different ones that uh had medium speed records like the bird on my head it was kind of a modest hit uh, but the Chipmunks thing, with the combination of it being a Christmas song and released right before the holidays, it just hit. And it was like the perfect thing. And it went to number one, not only in 1958, but again in 59 and 1960. And I think every year to like 62 or 63, it just became it's number like one Monster again. Mash. It's like Monster Mash. They'll play Monster Mash and they'll play yeah. the Chipmunks. Am I right or not every Christmas? Yeah, yeah. It's that same type of thing. You know, it's like... You know, and so now it's a perennial, you know, even if you've never seen the cartoons, even if you've never seen the movies, I mean, you you know the song, you know, that's that's the main thing, so. <laughs> Can and, I say, with the Chipmunks, I mean, that's marketing there. I actually reckon the Chipmunks were before its time. Would you agree with that? I do. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty much before their time. 
I mean, he uh, had the market. Who had such a product back then in 58? Right. And, you know, it took them a while. You know, I showed you that earlier cover. You know, it's like they look like weasels or something like that. They look, yeah, that's you know, it took them a while to redesign it a few times to get them to look like the cute, cuddly cartoon types that we like. And even then, they didn't do much merchandising. A lot of the merchandising came out after the show had been off the air. You know, it's like a after it was off of primetime and on Saturday morning. And then, boom, there's like coloring books and toys and, you know, everything, you know, <laughs> so. I'm a big fan like you. Mm -hmm. So, any more you can tell me about the book? Did you interview anybody? I interviewed people who worked on the uh, actual Alvin show because many of those people are still with us. Um, right. And uh, they gave insight on how they did the production and how what Ross was like. Um, Ross was very hands on on the whole project. You know, he didn't just give up his, his characters and say, hey, go make a cartoon show. No, he was there at every meeting. He wanted the show to be funny, uh, and uh, he wanted it to be clever and, you know, of course, incorporate the music. I mean, he did what the monkeys did five years later, <laughs> yeah, basically. You know, it's like they always talk about the monkeys having music videos. He had music videos of the Chipmunk songs. They were cartoons, but yes. <laughs> and look, uh, how look how the movies turned out now. Like these f new ones. Unbelievable. Well, they're still successful. I'll give them that, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they made four of those feature films, so it's nothing to sneeze at. I mean, like, like I said, I'm still a purist for the original guy and his original creation, but the fact that the son and his uh, wife can keep it going after all these years is kind of incredible. So, you know, I'd just like to see but more the of, it, of the original it, stuff. But <laughs> It's all pop culture now. Yes. It's going to live forever. Yeah. Yep. And so these people I spoke to that did the cells and drew it and all that, mm -hmm. just tell me a little bit more about some of the stories that came from from the uh, making of the show. Well, um, the the one I interviewed uh, at great length, his name's Bob Kurtz, and um, Bob has worked on a zillion different cartoon shows, Pink Panther and uh, Hanna Barbera stuff and everything throughout his career. He's he's even had his own TV uh, commercial studio and making animated commercials and things like that. Um, when he was doing Alvin's show, he was like the young kid on the block. He w it wasn't his first job. His first job was at Disney. But, um, you know, he had to kind of prove that, you know, at his young age at the time, that he could do it. And he actually designed the characters. You know, I'll show the album again. You know, this, this one, you know, this these kind of character designs that everybody knows and loves. And he was there with Ross looking over his shoulder and a couple others. And it's like, well, can you make him more cuter, more cuddly, more this, more that? And he's sitting there drawing it and, you know, and they loved it. And they said, that's the one. That's what we want. And he ended up doing some children's books and um, some product design. But then, you know, later it was given to other people to do and stuff like that, you know. Did you ask him for a picture of Alvin? Uh, an original from him? No. <laughs> I did put one in the book, though, but, you know. Um, Show us the pic in the book. Let me see. I can find one here. One of his original drawings. <laughs> I don't know. These are, like, his original drawings. They're not the most perfect. Oops. Let's... I see him. I see him. Yeah. That's great. And that's, that's kind of basically what he drew. And um, let's see, is there anything else I can show you? Well, the other thing everybody always asks about, and I'll just mention, you know, the other character that they came up with is Clyde Crash Cup. And so Never that, heard was, of that. that was a, another segment on the show. So, you know. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was fascinating. And it was basically an inventor who already had invented things. And it was... But they created it because, you know, a lot of cartoon shows, they always had like some, it's just like comic books, they always had some sort of backup feature with some other character that wasn't related. And um, they came up with this inventor that invented things that already existed. So that was that, that character. -y. And it was popular enough, he even got his own comic book series for a time. So, you know, but uh, in recent times, they've kind of dropped that character in favor of like the Chipettes and things like that. So. <laughs> 
can I ask what other collectibles you got? Have you got like Alvin T-shirts or Alvin toys? What is it you got as well? Well, I can't get them right now, but like I have like sure. a couple. I have a couple Christmas tree ornaments that you press a little button on it and it starts playing the song. Um, I don't know if you've got these little bath toys called Soki, uh, but uh, they. I have one of Simon, and it's just a Soki bottle about a foot tall. Or yeah, stuff. that's the Beetle ones. They did the Beetle, Paul and Rico yeah, on that. Yeah, So they did all the chipmunks, but I only have the Simon one, and I had that since I was a kid. Um, Are you looking for the other three? Well, I could get them eventually. I just have to go. <laughs> yeah, um, did you want a David Savelle? Civil? No, they didn't. Um, okay. Yeah, they only did. In fact, I don't think there's any merchandise Although I will say this, they, you know, they would put them on the record. So I mean, uh, let's see if there's a picture. I mean, I have pictures of all the different merchandise. I mean, like here's some blow-up chipmunks that you inflate. That's they're great. kind of mush, they're mush flat there. Um, you know, there's like those little games where you move the pictures around and little tattoos. You know, I tried to incorporate. Uh, well, actually, on this page, there's a lunchbox there. Yeah, that's great. So I tried to incorporate and put as many pictures as I could that I could find. Um, I don't think there's another book on Alvin, is there? Not this in depth. I mean, the son, Ross Bagdasarian Jr., threatened to uh, do a book about 20 years ago, and it still has never come out. And, you know, I always liked it, and but everybody was kind of hesitant to do one because they thought, oh, you know, what do they sue? And it's like, well, it's like writing a newspaper article. I mean, it's all free publicity for them, so there's no real reason why they should sue. And, you know, I love the characters. You know, I, I don't claim any copyright to them. I just like to write about them. It's just like me writing about the monkeys or anything else, you know. I write about what I love. The cover of the book. I love the cover of the book. How did you do that? Who did that for you? Uh, there's this artist named Jim Engel, who's a very good artist, and he suggested the idea. He came up with a rough sketch that was similar to, like it, I said, the Alvin Show uh, album cover with the TV sets. And um, originally, he was going to, and I'll hold it up even though you're showing it. Originally, he was going to have a drawing here, and uh, just to paste it in, he pasted in his photo. And I said, leave it like that. That's funny. <laughs> and oh, so, that's right. You know, so because he says, "Well, I can't do a very good caricature of him anyway." And I go, "It's perfect to have a photo of him." And I, well, I, put, more, he, I put more photos made. of him on the back and everything. So fantastic! Now, where can I get the book now? <laughs> Tell me links or whatever, so people can go and buy this great book. Okay, um, it's on Amazon and Bear Manor Media. I've done. Most of my books through Bear Manor Media, I've worked with a couple other publishers, and I've self-published a couple books, but yeah, all of them are available on Amazon, so that's your safest bet, but um, this one's available in hardback, paperback, and in ebook. so, you know, the one I've been showing is a hardback. <laughs> right, so. now Mark, if they want it signed, do you sell it direct? I do, yeah. So where are they, for, if they want to buy it direct from you and you sign it, what's the link for that? Uh, probably the best way is just to email me directly. I'll give you my email address. It's funideas.mark, with a K, funideas.mark at gmail.com. Oh, I love it. As I said, we spoke prior, and, and uh, I sent you a book that I know you're going to love, right? Where's Ringo? Where's Ringo? Hey, where is Ringo? I haven't found it yet. <laughs> I know it's on its coming, way. You know how rare that book is? That book is really rare. I've never seen to... it before, you know, and I'm a pretty big Beatles fan, but then I didn't know who did the cough either. <laughs> you know what? When it comes to your place, you'll be looking for Ringo, believe me. Anyway, I want to tell you, Mark, it's been a fascinating interview, and I've loved it. Thank you. And I'm sure I'll find out about some of your other books too. All right. Well, this, so all the best the... from Place to GP and Mark. Yes. Take us out, Mark, and just stay there. All right. Say goodbye to everyone. Bye. See everybody, make sure you get Alvin. Alvin! <laughs> that killed it. <laughs> All right, see you, Mark.